Welcome to Home Team Advantage. I'm Gary Giambetti along with Mike Egan. And um, you got it right. Yeah, and yeah, because he put hometown in my head yep. um, before we started. Do we have to give him that disclaimer before we get started? What's that one? That we have nothing to talk about. No, so <laughs> stick with us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're we're running on fumes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, or we, vapor. We had our we had our pre uh, meeting this morning and <laughs> sat around and really didn't talk about anything except for some poor guy who got shot in Virginia. <laughs> yeah, man, that was quite the news story to wake up to. Yeah. That somebody shot his brother in the head and hopefully, I mean, it doesn't sound good, but hopefully the guy can recover. And, yeah, let's hope so. And um, it's that, a strange a world we live in these yeah, days. Bad situation. And you watch those idiots, I shouldn't say idiots. Yeah, I will. Those idiots on fighting each other, the Republican, the Democrats, Congrats. and the FBI, and the CIA, and they're all going after each other and pointing fingers. And yeah. It's, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just huh? get, we, why can't, like the song says, why can't we all get along? Just work together. Yep. That's all it is. That's all it takes. Anyways, sports. Uh, yeah. Uh, VFW, we can start with. Split with Grand Rapids the other day. I think they lost three to one in a very well played game. I, I, I understand from the coach from Tim Zubich, and then they came back in the second game, seven innings and won 17 15. Oh wow! So that was quite a. But again, they had a they had a ten to one or ten to two lead and, and frittered it away. away. No, it was ten to one, and then Rapids scored nine runs in like the fifth inning oh, and wow. kind of frittered it away. But then we ended up outscoring them seven to what? five in the last two innings. So they came away with a split of that doubleheader. And then they play tonight at uh, Al Nyberg Field uh, starting at 4.30 p.m. against Duluth East. Oh, And then they have a 6.30 up. game at again right following right. that game. So they're uh, on their way, getting closer to playoffs for them. So good luck to them tonight. And then they play, I believe they play East again tomorrow down at Duluth. It's gonna so. be tough on uh, pitching if you don't well, have the pitching. Yeah, and he said that with six games this week. Yeah, they gave uh, in that seventeen fifteen game. He said they gave a bunch of guys a chance to go out on the mound and throw, and obviously, that came but back. they need experience right. too. But that's probably what led to most of those runs being scored because okay. he had to save some guys for uh, obviously today and tomorrow. So. They're, they, you know, they want that highest seed, highest seed possible. And so, you know, I, you hate to say it to play a, an under team, but you, know, you don't want to start out with uh, playing the number one seed. Right. You know, you'd like to be the number one or number two seed and have a chance to advance. So where are they at right now, do you know? So I, I don't know. I haven't kept that great of track of it. I mean, they've, they've won some important games. They swept Hermantown. So they got a you know a points game. Usually the first game is the points game, right? And uh, they got the big point against Hermantown, you know. But they they're probably probably sitting between three and four right now. I would I would think maybe two. Well, usually that first game, like you said, is the important game, the points game, because usually the second game, as you mentioned, are the kids that don't play a lot get an opportunity to play, so they play the second game. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, but it looked like, you know, and you're right. You're totally right on that one. And, but, you know, on that second game, when I looked at the box score, that he had a lot of his. First game. I started. think he's got his, that's probably going to be his team if he enters, when they enter okay. playoffs. And I'm going to tell you right now, those, those kids are good. Good. So Hibbing's baseball future looks really bright with some of those players they have coming up. And they know, they know how to, I, I hate to say this right now, but they know how to win. <laughs> What's wrong with that? Well, nothing. Yeah. But it's like I don't want to jinx them or anything. But uh, you know, they get behind, but they don't. The G and Betty curse. Yeah, they they don't <laughs> give. I you know I, I hate to say they give up, but but you know, and some teams when they get behind, just don't have what it takes. Hopefully, this won't be like the Yankees and the Red Sox with that Bambino <laughs> curse, the G and Betty curse. Yeah, the G and Betty yeah. curse certainly. <laughs> But, but but a lot of these guys are on those hockey teams, you know that one yep. Pee Wee and Bantam, well, especially Bantams, I guess now with some of these kids that won two state titles, one as a Pee Wee and one as a Bantam team, mm -hmm. and so it, that that's bodes well. Yeah, success is uh, 
contagious when you start to get a little taste of it. Mm -hmm. So, like you said, hopefully that's carried over from the hockey program. Yes. And hopefully that will turn over into the high school when they start playing high school hockey. That's right. You know, now, now I know, because obviously the high, this high school hockey team did a fantastic job this year, um, but now they're losing 10 or 11 seniors. Yep. So. But they got some good young kids coming up. Oh, yes. These two Bantam teams. Yes, and they have two good goalies coming up again yep. um, to replace Braden Boyer. And um, so, you know, they should be solid. I mean, it may, might be young this coming year, but yep. so what? You start, you got to start somewhere. Right. And you got these guys, hopefully they can make the adjustment from um, Pete Bantams. I, it's probably a big one. They should probably play JV at well, some point. Right. But, you know, some of them are just going to have to jump in and play. Well, you're, unfortunately, you're going against bigger, stronger guys. You know, <coughs> bless you. Oof. Big difference coming. between a 18-year-old and a 15-year-old. So. Oh, yeah. So... Hopefully it works out. Yep. And then the Legion team, I think they were in Cloquet last night, but I haven't heard anything yet from them. And then they go to Hermantown on Saturday to finish off their regular season. And then the next week, the district, I think, eight playoffs start. So. In their seed, do you have any idea? Where no, I don't have any there? idea where they are. Hermantown didn't show up here about a week ago. For Friday, I think it was a Friday or a Thursday game. Didn't show up. Did a forfeit then? Well, I don't know. I mean, they just said they weren't. Logan texted me and said that they weren't coming. Oh well. So I don't know. I if guess they took a forfeit win or. Yeah, being Hermantown, I guess they can do that, right? Well, it's funny how a Hermantown team can't, or Hermantown can't field a team of nine guys to come up here and play. Yeah. It's just, it's ridiculous. Yeah, but well, there's no more COVID excuses either. No. And, and it, are they, is it hockey excuses? Now these kids are basketball excuses or oh, they have yeah. camps or whatever. But um, you know what? That's the way it goes. And you don't want to lose games because no. you, you don't have a whole lot of games to begin with. Speaking of that, just take off the cuff a little bit that we mentioned hockey. A month ago, you we were talking about. A girls' hockey coach, I got let go, and he took him to any any update on that one. No, I haven't heard anything more. Okay. It was Larry Olam at uh, Orono, and I don't know if he's gonna if he's gonna resign or if he's gonna stay. I haven't heard that yet, okay. so I don't know. So, but yeah, apparently yeah, strike again. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so yeah, the, so playoffs are coming up for Legion. Uh, it seems like it's too early for that, but I guess it really isn't. Summer's half over. Uh, I know. So, speaking of that, we should uh, compliment the city and the uh, Hibbing Chamber of Commerce on a nice job on the parade. And uh, Ron filmed it. I haven't seen it yet, but uh, I understand it's a, it's a uh, Oscar-winning nominated uh, production. <laughs> so, um, what, Oscar didn't call you? <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't been called. He hasn't been Pulitzer Prize or yeah. what's the other award that they give out? <laughs> yeah. Nobel Peace Prize. Yeah. Or, uh, he yeah. hasn't been called by any of those. Well, Oscar yet. Johnson from uh, Cloquet is going to call. Him. What a great job Got he did on the parade. <laughs> but, no, uh, it was a good parade. I mean, I, I haven't really stuck around for him, you know, for the whole yeah. thing. But it was long. It was like almost an hour. Like you said, an hour and a half around. Around. That's what I heard. I was unfortunately I missed my first one in 20 years. Well, you had more important yep. things to do, like go but, watch uh, the Twins lose 15 to two. Yeah, that was a real <laughs> treat. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm sure we'll get to that part of yeah. it. But yeah, no, if you know what, if your Halloween has nothing over the parade candy, that uh, was amazing. I was dead by my cousin and. They filled up almost the whole bag with the candy that Good. they threw out that day. Good. So, yeah, it was. Oh, uh, yeah, you could say it was too much, but you know well, what? That's the fun of it. And yeah, but he's over there. Some poor kid grabbed the candy. He's over there grabbing it away from me. <laughs> Just one piece. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so took, they took the bag and ran with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was his one piece. Yeah. But yeah, so it was it was a good day. The street dance was was fine. It was a lot it of was people are okay, heard. Yeah, uh, thank yep. you. You know, we give a big thanks to the police department and the 
the fire the ambulance, the fire department, the ambulance crews for being there and uh, making city, sure that and city services. I mean, yes, you know, you know they put up those barricades and they clean. And then it's amazing at uh, midnight that sweepers, both of them, come out on both sides of the road and. They get it cleaned up pretty fast. So. Well, I, I'm glad you brought that up because I was going to say that because I went for, well, I go for a while. I didn't go Sunday, but Monday you go down there and it's like nothing yep. happened. On and There's a few gum stuck to the sidewalk into the road, but um, they do an excellent job. And, and again, it's been a, it's a tribute to the city that they're able to do this. And it's uh, a tradition that's gone off very well. And now hopefully, I think Mines and Pines is revisited in August. In August, oh, okay. and then you know, so hopefully that can you know gear up again and, and be as popular as it was you know years ago. So mm -hmm. uh, a lot of things happening in town, which is good. Mm -hmm. Well, and the Hibbing High School band did a wonderful job yeah. too. I mean, they're still not quite. You know, I hope he starts. You know, when he starts building it up, it gets a little more kids in there. But they did a good job. But the only thing you can. And I don't know how you do it, but you got to have more music. Well, and you got to have more bands. But I don't know how you, how you even accomplish that. We, um, well, unfortunately, you got to pay to have bands come now. Okay. Um, you know, like the uh, drum and bugle corps that used to come all the time. You know, I think Shelly told me they're eight, nine hundred bucks for them to come down and play. Ooh. And uh, you know, that money doesn't just grow in a tree behind the chamber office. So. Um, in high school, I, unfortunately, I just don't travel that because of the expense of doing it. Mm -hmm. well, and then they're all done after the 4th. And they're all done basically after the 4th of July. But this came up at our school board meeting last night. We complimented the, the band and what a great job they've done. But um, unfortunately, a lot of people think back to when they had 100 kids. Well, we don't have 100 no. kids in the school <laughs> anymore. No. <laughs> you know, our senior <laughs> class was only 140, I think, this year. So. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, hats off to uh, the band directors, and I think you're, you're starting to see a little more influx into the band. Uh, the choir in that area has picked up quite a bit, so there's still some interest in there. But I don't know. The, someone made a comment last night uh, at the meeting that they remember back when they were in school that there used to be athletes used to play in the band, but apparently they don't do that anymore. Uh, no, you're right. A lot of a lot of guys who were in sports were playing in the yep. band. Didn't matter. Well, they weren't worried about falling and cutting a lip on a trombone if they were playing hockey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I, if that ever happens, I wonder what the chances of that are yeah. happening but, to somebody. But, you know, and it's not going to, it's something that's not going to happen overnight. It, this is going to take years of uh, getting the kids back interested in it and doing it. And, um, you know there is financial help if somebody can't afford an in, uh, an instrument to play. There's there's financial help available through the school to you know get them that. So, um, hey man, if you can learn to play a any type of musical instrument, you're you're a step ahead. Mm -hmm. I, I just think that my own personal thought on that. Uh -huh. so. Well, and, and, and I, re I and obviously this is back when too, but I remember when we had a battle of the bands at Cheever Field. And I don't remember if Achiever was out where it is now or if it was near the high school. It okay. might have been out there by the college, but they had a battle of the bands where they had about six or seven or eight bands nice. up here. Now, hey, and I'm not, like you said, you got to pay them to come, yeah. but you got a nice brand new football field with artificial turf. It would be nice to see something like that happen oh, yeah. again. Yeah, I mean, that would be beautiful if it happened out there. It probably gets... Probably get one of those grambling bands to come up. And, <laughs> what a show they put on! Oh yeah, the southern band. Ooh. But you know, I, you know, this far, what, what I, I don't. I think Grand Rapids starts marching band in August. Oh, okay. You know, I because I've been over there and I've heard their band practicing, and I don't know how many parades they go to or whatever. But I know they start later. I don't think they even start yeah. after the school season ends. But you know, it's. it's I mean, you can get a scholarship. I mean, there's a young a, a friend of mine. Um, her daughter got a scholarship to play for the University of Alabama. Oh. And, oh. yeah, I mean, big time. <laughs> and, you know, the traveling they did and just the experience they got, you know, playing, you know, before 80 to 100,000 people. It's, it's, it's something to look forward to. Yeah. So. Yeah, no, it's. And you get a scholarship, too, to go to yeah. school. So. I wonder if they get NILs. What the heck is that? 
where they get money. Oh, I like, mean like the athletes? Yeah, like the athletes. I wonder if they can yeah, yeah, promote yeah. themselves like <laughs> an athlete. And a tuba player here, give him 100 bucks. To <laughs> <laughs> get a little extra cash on the side. Yeah. So, but anyways, I, that, I just hope that, again, you know, it was a nice day, beautiful uh, day to have it, and it worked out well, and hopefully next year will be the same. So. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, don't stay away from the mini donut. So don't stay next. Don't say next year, because uh, summer's almost over with. Summer is half over. <laughs> so we gotta look forward to December, January, and February. You do. Yeah. Well, yeah. You'll probably be down in Florida, <laughs> hunting snakes and killing gators. Yep. So yeah, me and uh, what's his name that was in prison now for raising lions and tigers. What was that guy's name? That had Joel. There? What's that? Had the lions and tigers. Yeah, and I know. He got put in jail for killing. That shows how much. Uh... Oh. oh. <laughs> My baby wrote me a letter. Better. <laughs> Tell me we're through. <laughs> that's all right. That's, yeah, that's see, now we'll like, be humming that song all day. That's what makes this show this show is when yep. stuff like that happens and yep. kind of breaks it up a little bit. Yeah, what can I think of that guy? It's not Joe Dirt. It's something else. Old Dirt was the movie, right? Well, it was Tigers. Tiger. Tiger King. Tiger King. That was it. Yep. And they had the the woman that he that they just despise each other and all. Yeah. And she killed her husband, and got away with it. So oh. The lion ate the husband. Oh wow. <laughs> ah. Stay hey, away from her. Only in America. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I oh. guess oh he's yeah he's gonna oh man he's leaving us here alone. We can, <laughs> yeah. Now we can really swear. <laughs> But uh, getting off of that now, I guess, go back. Oh, we forgot. We... Uh, uh, this is uh, our official, unofficial sponsor. What are we having today? It says something it's on Turtle top. Mocha. Oh, Turtle Mocha. So Caribou go Coffee. to Caribou Coffee. They got all your beverage needs over there. And... Is that why they have all those turtle shells behind the building? Yeah, that's, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then, of course, there's up. North lettering. <laughs> I had to. I had to yeah. make sure I said that correctly <laughs> yeah. because I know what we like to say. Yep. One hundred and nine Howard Street. Yes. And yeah, get all your letter jacket needs. And yep. now we're doing so plugs we, for embroidery. Yeah. <laughs> embroidery needs. Uh, jacket needs. Yep. A little he bit did make me a nice jacket for the Masabi Tribune, yep. so I give Michael a lot of credit. Yep. He does yeah, a good job. It's it, it's. Uh, been a tough battle, you know. Finally, after two years, it's back up and running again. So, uh, yeah. hopefully, thanks. So. But you mentioned letter jackets. You know, being that we're filling in time here, <laughs> people don't buy letter jackets anymore. Uh, I don't know why. They, well, I heard that they're. Well, you told me the prices expensive. are up to, on them, but but there's a price you can put on the fact that. I guess I look back. I I fought tooth and nail to get a oh. letter jacket because I was proud to be in that school or in that activity and now it's just nah. It's, yeah, it's a, I think it's a badge of honor to be honest. Sure. With you. I sure. mean, I could hardly wait too and I never was an athlete. Yeah. <laughs> but, so. <laughs> and maybe they've watered it down a little bit because basically you can, you know, get a, a letter jacket for anything these days. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, you still got to be proud and, and it's an achievement that you should, you should like you say, where is the badge of honor? Yeah, so. and I, I, you know what? Now that you say that, I just, I don't. When I'm at the high school during the school year, I don't see don't a see lot many, of letter, no. letter jackets anymore. No, nope. when they're walking down the halls. But uh, here we got. Um, I know I made that one for Bob Dylan. He threw it in a box. box. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I gotta say that this Saturday night at the races, they're having a. Is it a modified? Yeah, they're having a modified. Special race. Oh, okay. They're expecting a lot of uh, people from all over, maybe the state or country. I don't know, tri-state area. Oh, okay. So they are having a, a special modified race this weekend at the Hibbing Raceway, and then they're having. I think they race either Tuesday or Wednesday next week for some for some extreme. Oh boy, I'm I was not sure. told. Yeah, I, yeah, you might want to see if Michael yeah, knows anything. Keep everybody about it. entertained. Here. But yeah, so the Hibbing Raceway is um, is putting on a couple of ex, ex, extra show or not extra shows, but um, I think they're special features. Features, yeah, yeah. special features. But um, so there's something to do if you're looking for something I, to do Saturday and next catch week. Catch on the air here. 
<laughs> um, what's going on at the racetrack next? Have they got a special race coming up? Northern, oh, hang on, put you on, put the, hang on. Okay, what's it called? Northern XR Storm. Okay, what uh, what uh, class of car is that? Late models, modifieds, and Midwest mods. Okay. And, and what day is that? Saturday? That would be Tuesday, okay. the 18th, or whatever day Tuesday is. Okay. Okay. And then uh, Saturday? It's regular this racing? Saturday, yeah. Yeah, this Saturday is just regular racing. Okay. Okay. But uh, there is a modified, I think, special coming up this set weekend, isn't there, or no? That I'm not sure of. Because I know that um, I had Lee Bloomquist do me a store, do a story on that coming up here. So I got him running that tomorrow morning. So okay. there, there is a special modified event going on. They just expect it to, to bring in drivers from all over. So yep. and a, a little extra money on I think a thousand dollars for a win. Oh, which yes. I which yep. which is I mean that I, that must be good for you know coming here to race. Yep. Okay. Yeah. All right, well, we're, we can't pay you for being on the air, <laughs> so we're just advertising up, up, up north letter. So. All right, bud, there thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Thanks. Love you. Bye. 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 <laughs> Little did he know he was going to be on the show this yeah. morning. <laughs> well, we got the skinny on it, right, Tuesday. There we go. So yep. Tuesday is that special race. Yep. and uh, so Hopefully the weather will hold. It'll be nice out, and they can get the races in. Well, in talking to Ronnie Masinski, he says it's going to be nice out. Oh, so okay. he says it's well, going to be. Nice it it's gonna I'm be. Gonna, I'm going to call it whatever he says is gospel. So, yep. That's um, well. We better get into the twins before we run out of. We run out of time, and they run out of time because they're in second place now. And unfortunately, I went and watched them play last Sunday, and it was 15 to two. And I've actually first time I've been in a Target Field where people were booing them mm. when Rocky Balboa, A.K.A. What's Rocco first, Baldelli, Rocco Baldelli <laughs> came out of the dugout. They were booing him. Really? Yes. Well. So, and then he supposedly made a comment that if you don't want to play baseball, don't get on the plane to Oakland. They're playing the worst team in the league, and I bet they lose two out of three. Well, it, it, they, and on, the, on KFAN in the morning, they have this thing with this Zach Alverson. He says, is it a must win or do they have to win? What do you? Is there, same I think thing, isn't a, it? I don't know if it's <laughs> the same thing or not, but a must-win might be different because you have. I mean, I don't see it being a must-win because it's only one game, and well, it's only one series they, or one series, yeah. and they've got six. What? It's eighty more games to play or whatever it is. So yeah, so it's like oh. This Saturday, modified special for a thousand dollars to win. Yeah. Okay. Let's get Michael to send that. So. All right. So yeah, I, I I I think it's a must. I think you have to sweep the A's. They're yep. the worst team in the in the league, and at least in the American League. Yep. But they're getting a brand new stadium in the city of sin, Las Vegas. Vegas. Well, yeah, but they're not there yet. The Las Vegas A's. They bringing, got the approval. Yeah, no, they did, but yep. who knows when they're going? Two years, I mean, their stadium will be done. Yeah. So they're not going anywhere. For right them. on the strip. Well. <laughs> it's got to have a roof too, with it. It's got a roof. Yeah, it's going to be quite the, you know, Vegas, uh, I, in fact, I just uh, watched a special the other night about how they built the football stadium in Vegas and all that fancy stuff they did with it and built it during COVID. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's quite the, quite the most expensive stadium in the NFL. And aren't they having a Grand Prix race there this year? Got a Grand Prix race. Uh, last time we were out there uh, with my friend Ernie and his wife, uh, they were um, redoing the strip and making it wider and putting it down the concrete for this race, mm -hmm. which comes this fall. Yeah. So, so there, the Vegas a lot of crap is going on. in place. Yeah. All they need now is an NBA team. They got football, they got baseball, now they need NBA, even though they got the summer league there all the time. So, I've never been there. Yeah. So. And then they got that, speaking of summer league, they, they watched that seven foot four kid. He's not that good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I heard he had a rough first game, and then yeah. he came back and bounced back in the second yeah. game. But we'll see. He'll do I it. Mean, I mean, unfortunately, he weighs about 90 pounds. Well, yeah, I mean, he needs to bulk up because he's just going to get guys like Joe Bear and those guys. They're going to, yeah, they're going to beat him up pretty good. So. Well, it's like that, like Chet Holmgren. 
Yeah. He came out. He wasn't. No, I don't know. I haven't heard any updates on him this year, yeah. but he missed all last year because yeah. he had a leg injury. Right. And now has this kid got the same kind of build? Yeah, I he, wouldn't say so. Yeah, yeah he's, he's built the same. Yeah. So we'll see. I mean, hold hold off on the accolades for this kid until you actually see him play a full season. Because yeah. look at Zion Williamson. He oh, hasn't, I know. He, he hasn't, hasn't played. And he's big. Yeah, and he's yeah, yeah he's bigger. And uh, he hasn't played a, a full yeah. season in what two or three years that he's yeah. been in the league. So, I'm, I'm sure we got your mother really confused now because we're going baseball, oh. basketball, football. Yeah. And, <laughs> she's going, ah. huh? What? What are they talking <laughs> about? What's that guy now? talking about again? <laughs> so, no, but uh, sorry, as for G. the twins, <laughs> they they have something's got to change, and you kind of wonder what they do in the spring training. With, uh, well, spring training is done and gone, and, and now I think the manager's job is on the hook. Their batting coach, or hitting coach, that, that, they lead the league in strikeouts. I mean, can you be proud of that? No, you can't. <laughs> you know, I mean, but you know what? And two, and playing devil's advocate, I mean, they can't go to the plate for those guys and swing the bat for them. No, they can't. But you know, the first guy to go is always the manager. Yeah. You know, you're not going to get rid of their, those high-paying prima donnas. So. Um, It'll be interesting to see what they do. You know, they're a game out now, right? They're half a game, half yeah. a game out. So if uh, I mean, if they can string together a few wins and do that, and you know, save his job, fine. But they need to either make a trade, and they need to make they need to make a big trade. So well, they yeah, we'll see if <clears throat> they're no, buyers or sellers. Yeah. Well, nobody wants to buy Buxton's contract, <laughs> and it wouldn't hurt for them to lose Buxton because their outfield, to me, is. One of the premier outfields in the in the league right now. I know, but he'd make it better if he would play out there. No, he wouldn't. Ah. Yeah, he would. He'd no. make it a lot better. Yeah, one. Yeah, one. Well, one, yeah. that's the issue. Yep. But, but yeah. it, you don't have to worry about that when the ball flies over your head. <laughs> <laughs> no, because they've given up what five home runs, runs. in a game like yep. a couple times this year, so. and it's like, come on, just well, get your act together. You did it again. Yeah, we filled up. We hate to say that. We should call week. this the BS hour because <laughs> half of it's BS, yeah. the other half is legit. Well, I tell people we, we don't we don't come in prepared, yeah. so we, we just talk and off the cuff. And, yeah. you know, I hope you enjoy it because uh, we wouldn't yeah. be doing this if well, we didn't just, have fun yeah, doing just it. Just send those notes to uh, Ron over there at HPAT that you watch the show. Yeah. Maybe we'll get one. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, it's Gary. He looked like the Hells Angels yesterday riding his bike down. <laughs> That's not, Gary, Gary. From Super One. Oh, okay, Carry. Carry, right. I mean. All right. Yeah, Carrie. from Super One. I said, I don't ride a bike. Yeah, he looked like that. <laughs> I thought I was watching The Wizard of Oz again. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> well, we've come to the end of another show for Mike Egan. I'm Gary Jimbetti. We'll see you again next week on Home Team. Again. Hibbing Public Access Television would like to thank U.S. Bank for providing us with studio space.